Bill and Bill were playing in a band called Tony and the Bandits. We sort of asked Tony to step aside and brought in Ivan Brown, who was the lead vocalist with Ivan and the Sabres, and Ivan and the four of us became the Lemon Peppers. Well, in those days, it seemed like, uh, oh, get a record deal, go you play music. No it seemed like falling off a log. There wasn't any of this, oh, God, you know, like, there was every every block in your city didn't have a group trying to make it, quote unquote. It was just like there were very few bands, really, that amounted to anything. We opened for the uh, Jefferson Airplane at Cincinnati Gardens in the fall of 67, before Green Tambourine ever got big, simply on the strength of the fact that we were Cincinnati's best band, basically. The owners of Kama Sutra Records, of which Buddha was a subsidiary, <laughs> Do you, can, I, I'm not allowed to tell this story? Tell the story. We're in uh, deep trouble, let's put it that way, with uh, certain people who had loaned them money. They were unable to pay it back, so they needed a hit group now. They needed it in New York second. So we got ourselves involved in, unbeknownst to us, a, a thing where we wondered why there was all this hype and push on us. Boy, they're really, they love us, boy. I mean, they got this producer together. This song is, is going to be a good song. You guys record it. I'm sure it'll be a hit. We know it's going to be. It's got to be a hit or we're all going to die. <laughs> you know, so. Drop a dime before I walk away. Any song you want, I'm glad to play. Money feeds my music machine. Now listen while I play. My green tambourine. The only time that really hit home to us is when we were out in L.A. and uh, the, the three owners of Kama Sutra, they took us to dinner and just took us out on the town and, oh, thank you guys. Thanks for cutting that record. And of course, they probably could have got some other schlubos to do it anyway. They were scared stiff. I mean, <laughs> they, they, were, they were dead men walking around. It was a thrill when I heard it on the radio and they, it was going up and up. And then when it hit one, it definitely... You know, when was that? February 3rd, 1968. They'd oh. hit you with, what's it feel like to be a star? Well, I, I don't know. It was two months ago, I was studying for finals. At the time, there was always that dichotomy of we're selling out. It was a big thrill, and it was like being sucked up into something you knew you didn't control anymore. It was the biggest airplay song of the entire year, 1968. Plus, it made number one on Billboard. That's harder to do than have a gold record. The only down part of it is once we got in the music business, we were pigeonholed as a bubblegum group, quote unquote, because we were on Buddha with Ohio Express and the, and the made up groups that had the that sound. the huge success of Green Tambourine. And it had huge success, and it's, it's on compilation discs now where you've got the 1910 fruit gum coming, you also see the lemon pipers. Now I hear it in the frozen food section at Kroger's. <laughs> you know, it's really great because if you really look back on it, even though we had our down times, even amongst us all, okay, quite frankly, we laughed more than anything during that whole thing. Yeah. Look at the liner notes on the back of the first album. It was a total yeah. spoof. The yeah. whole, we were pimping the whole thing right and left. That's goof. basically, we were goofing it all. The whole all band was there. a goof. We were not serious, ever. <laughs> 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 they didn't want to show me even now thing. we're not serious, so. I don't think, in a sense, we haven't really broken up. I mean, we're still all buddies the same, still together, been playing music in one form or another. So I don't even think of us as broken up. We just changed, metamorphosized. Bands break up, I think, when they end up hating one another or something, and they move to other parts of the world or something, never speak. And it's never been the case with us. We've always kept in contact. <laughs> Off the wall fun. And Cincinnati's hottest music on the Q Morning Zoo. Those guys are bananas. <laughs> bananas who said the cleaner? Being cleaned and blocked. I haven't eaten bananas in 10 years. I hate bananas, man. I used to have to do this to get people to recognize me on the street. But we were the Q Morning Zoo from 1982 to 1988. And we still do mornings just in different places. That's now. right. I do mornings at WGRR, only 103.5. And I'm at Cincinnati's Country B105. And coming up next on Cincinnati's Rock Legends. My man, Bootsy Collins, gets his big break. James Brown. And local groups get their chance to be on WEBN's album project. And Pure Prairie League tops the charts with a girl named Amy. All this and a lot more when Cincinnati's Rock Legends continues on Star 64.